Hi guys and welcome to this Friday's video which is new firmware that was released yesterday. It's 1.1.22 RAL and we're going to just go through the first little bit because I actually recorded it back to front. Change the sharing bandwidth limit range. Now a lot of people have been getting really upset about how the speed is being set by people to like nothing. To 0 0.1 megabits per second and stuff like that. And then they complain and whinge that they haven't shared enough. So now they've got this. So when you try and set it, it says the, the speed has got to be 1.5 megabits per second with a maximum of 1024 megabits per second. If I try and put in 0 0.5, it'll say, nope, you've got to put in at least 1.5. Me personally, I think they should get rid of this um, or maybe set it so that it takes a percentage of your bandwidth, but it would have to be a high percentage. So if you get a gigabit or, 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 or a, a gigabyte per second or whatever I mean really that's that, that's that's a lot you should be sharing a lot more than 1.5 megabytes per second so I think more work needs to be done on that and hopefully they get rid of it so let's have a look at what else so fix the DHCP bug we won't know about that fix an issue with a session speed chart okay group SSID by frequency I'll show you that implemented auto refresh on tunnel page hide a SSID option, kill switch option, Rust desktop, improved Atom OS security which is obviously because of all that hacker gate stuff, improved the relay mode SSID connection and improved web filter dashboard diagram and so it basically says please upgrade as soon as possible do not try to downgrade to avoid irreversible errors and uh, yeah this is a big update in the background about the security aspect of it because of all the SSH stuff that happened before. So let's get on with what has actually changed. All right, so here I am on my dashboard and you can see I've got 1.122 installed. I've got half a gigabyte of memory, so this is a Pico. It's basically a travel one that I use, which um, whenever I go to a friend's house, but I'm on a private IP. So you can see there, 192.168.178 and yeah you'll notice as well that my auto update is off but it says that I'm using 1.1.22 but the latest version is only 1.1.21 and that's because Deeper haven't pushed it to the devices yet eventually it will, that will change to 1.1.22 and you'll be able to click update and it'll just update if you want this now you've got to basically use the upload firm, firmware and download the firmware that's in the description below and manually update it so let's just go through some tabs. So nothing on the traffic and nothing in the log. The DPN, now this is, this is a change. So the DPN smart route, which you all know is the, 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 the uh, DPN smart route where you can assign tunnels to different things. If we go down to full route, you've now got kill switch. So if we change to North Europe, hit kill switch, apparently you've got to do kill switch first and then select it so what that will do is it will make sure that if you're connected to say Lithuania and the tunnel drops it won't then automatically revert back to your normal internet so it will protect the IP address of your house internet itself before if the tunnel dropped it would just revert back and you wouldn't know so that is really good um, it should have been in a long time ago and the community pushed for that and it's here so it's great Auto refresh in the tunnels, we won't see that, but that's obviously there in the background. They've changed the name of this tab. Uh, I can't remember what it was before, but it's now called security. And then you have other tabs here. So the Wi-Fi, this is another new thing. On the left-hand side, if you go to scan, you can see you've got 5 gigahertz and 2.4. For some reason, it's got all the old access points in from when I set up other devices, but... Regardless, 5 gigahertz and 2.4, and I've got a minor 5G there. And then you've got down here hide SSID. So, yeah, hide your SSID so nobody can see it. Obviously, if you need to connect to this, as long as you know the SSID name and the password, you can manually put that in and you'll be able to connect to it, even if you can't see it on your Wi Fi list. Uh, other than that, nothing's really changed. Uh, you can see there, so I haven't really used this that much. Rust desk. 
Now Rust Desk is a remote access tool. I'm not sure how it compares on or how it works with this, but my IP address is 192.168.0.178. You do not have a public IP, you can use wire, guard, VPN, port forward to get a public IP. Now, yeah, I'm not gonna do that um, just now because I don't know how it works, but I'll have to figure it out. And then you've got all of this information here, so ports and things like that. It looks complicated, I don't think it will be. Um, and then you've got a log here. Um, and that's it. So this is on a Pico. Uh, you can see there on the top right corner it says DPN full route North Europe. So it tells you where you are. And that is it. That's pretty much the update. Um, I appreciate this video was a little bit quick. Well, 6 minutes 20. So let's just get on with the final thoughts in regards to this. So the vast majority of this update are improvements in the background. So security issues which have been patched, fixed, etc. Um, yeah, the sharing bandwidth thing is cool, but people are still going to complain that it can be set as low as 1.5 megabits. I know some people's internet isn't as good as that. However, that's not really enough for the deep. Well, it is enough for the DPN for websites, most websites, but Netflix and stuff it isn't. So I think that should be kind of increased or removed or something. Uh, DCP bugs, we don't know anything about that. The SSID by frequency, there's been a couple of questions about being able to see 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz connections, which is great. The kill switch is very welcome, that's been pushed by the community for quite a while now. Should always have been there, however, we've now got it, so that's great. Auto refresh, fine, that's okay. Um, the Rust, Rust Desk tab, I'm going to do a separate video on that, I'm going to figure it out and... Uh, We'll, we'll work out how to do Rust Desk. I want to see what it actually does. I think it's going to be a way to remotely access your deeper network device. But again, we'll see. And then just improved Atom OS security. Improved the relay mode SSID connection, which will be about the Pico, I, I would imagine, to improve the way it communicates, because it can be a little bit hit or miss. Improved web filter dashboard diagram. And this version has made important updates to the underlying security of Atom OS. Please upgrade to this version as soon as possible. Do not try to downgrade versions to avoid irreversible errors. So that is it. That is the new firmware 1.1.22 REL. There'll be a Rust Desk video come in at some point and the official link to download this firmware and manually update it. If you want to get it on there now and have a play around with it, it's in the link in the description below. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you on Sunday for the weekly update. Thank you guys. Catch you later. Bye bye.